Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Happy Woman Wednesday. Hope you're enjoying this extra hot sun that we've got today out here in the DMV. Um, today we're going to be talking about breast and, and chest health again, and also talking about um, just kind of what to expect if you were to go through any type of like breast or chest surgery, uh, and kind of like what to expect in terms of pain and recovery and and how to uh, best take care of yourself and prepare for that part of your life if you are getting any kind of work done to your chest. And welcome to the folks who are in the room. Thanks so much for joining and being here. Hope you're having an awesome day. I'll give it a couple minutes or seconds for Walker to join and then get started. But in the interim, I will introduce myself. My name is Jewel and I use she, hers pronouns. And I work to bring educational Instagram lives to this space with Whitman Walker's community health team. And today we're going to be discussing, again, breast and chest health and pleasure part three. And again, focusing on things to know in relation to most any breast or chest surgery and how to prepare for it and uh, recovery expectations and timelines and more. And so during the COVID-19 pandemic, Whitman Walker's community health department has expanded its outreach efforts to include this social media platform. Uh, and so we cover various topics about HIV and STIs, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. Just waiting for Whitman Walker to get in the room, and then we'll get going with the live. Thanks so much. Uh, cool. So we'll get started. So first, let's go over some review from uh, our last few lives. Uh, together, we learned that, like all surgeries, breast augmentation carries risk. These include scarring, infection, uh, implant rupture, wrinkling of the skin at the implant site, breast pain, and more. We also learned that candidates for breast and chest surgery often include people who want larger breasts, who want to add symmetry to their body shape and proportions, or who have lost breast volume due to uh, weight loss or pregnancy, or who are transitioning and seeking gender affirming surgery or um, top surgery as part of their healthcare goals. So these are people who might be looking for breast or, or chest surgery or top surgery, uh, or looking to get reductions, what have you. So basically anyone who wants to change part of their body is eligible and a candidate for um, chest surgery. Uh, we also learned that you can find a board certified plastic surgeon through the American Society of, Pu of Plastic Surgeons or the American Society or American Board of Plastic Surgery. And then we finally, we learned that each nipple has hundreds of nerve endings, making them super sensitive to touch. Uh, and playing with your nipples can bring you a lot of pleasure as well as orgasm. And nipple orgasm is an activity capable of all genders, breasts, and chest types. So uh, into the, the meat of today. For all of these surgeries, um, whether you're getting a reduction or um, implants or what have you, uh, you've got to consider the time costs involved in the procedure and recovery, and recovery period. Uh, so while the initial recovery should only last about one to five days, it could take a few weeks before all of the pain and swelling go away from whatever chest or, or, or breast surgery you had. You'll also need to arrange vacation time away from work for the day of the procedure, as well as several days afterward, while you recover from the initial pain that might be just too much to work through. Your medical provider may prescribe strong pain medication that will make operating a vehicle dangerous. So you're gonna to need to get a ride home from your procedure and someone will need to drive you while you're taking any necessary pain prescriptions to help with the pain as well. Finally, you can begin normal activities again once you have the all clear from your plastic surgeon and they'll let you know when it's safe to begin activities again, like exercising. Risk and side effects. A common risk with breast augmentation surgery or um, different kinds of stuff. chest surgery is the need for follow-up and surgical procedures to correct any complications that may arise, but especially breast augmentation surgery. So some people may later desire or decide that they want a different size of implant or a lift as their skin stretches over time. So here are some of the risks and side effects that are included. Um, there's bleeding and bruising, there's pain in your breasts, there's infection at the surgical site or surrounding the implant, uh, there's capsular contracture or the formation of scar tissue inside the breast, and this can cause your implants to become misshapened, displaced, painful, or more visible. Uh, there's rupture or leaking of the implant, there's alteration of the feeling in your breast, often temporary, uh, fo temporarily after following surgery. Uh, there's rippling of the skin over where the, plant, where the implant is placed, often beneath the breast. Uh, there's incorrect placement or movement of the implant. There's buildup of liquid around the implant, uh, difficulty healing at the incision site, discharge from the breast or at the incision site, 
severe scarring of the skin, uh, severe nighttime sweating. And uh, those are just a few of the kind of risk and side effects that are associated with breast augmentation surgery. So as with any surgical procedure, the use of general anesthesia also carries risk, including death during the procedure. Um, people get this surgery all the time and, and, and make it out just fine, but just want to include all of the things that you should consider in your decision if this is a path you want to explore. Um, so reasons to call your surgeon immediately. Uh, if you are beginning to run a fever, if you see redness in or around your breast, especially red streaking on the skin, if you feel a warm sensation around the incision site, or if these could all be signs, or sorry, all of these um, different symptoms could be signs of infection. So these are reasons that you're going to call your surgeon ASAP and just get them on the phone, let them know what's happening to you, and uh, they can give you medical advice on how to proceed next. So after you've healed, any pain in the breast or armpit or change in the breast size or shape needs to be evaluated by your surgeon. These could indicate a ruptured implant and, uh, you know, it isn't always easy to identify a rupture right away as implants tend to leak slowly. So heads up on that. Uh, a few other rare complications that might arise uh, include chest pain and shortness of breath. These are medical emergencies that require hospitalization. So definitely don't, you know, hesitate to reach out to a doctor, medical provider, or get to the hospital. Uh, there's also the risk of anaplastic large cell lymphoma or ALCL. This is a newly recognized rare form of blood cell, cell cancer that's been associated with long-term presence of breast implants and most commonly co and most commonly associated with these textured silicone implants. So at this time, there have been um, 414 reported cases worldwide that the US Food and Drug Administration or the FDA is currently tracking. But based on these reports, the estimated risk of getting ALCL associated with breast implants is between one in 3,800 and one in 30,000 patients. To date, there have been 17 patient deaths uh, thought to be linked with breast implant associated ALCL. The majority of these patients were diagnosed after they developed swelling or fluid in the breast around the implants and within seven to eight days, or sorry, seven to eight years after the implants were placed. With ALCL, the cancer usually stays within the tissue around the breast implant, and although in some patients it did spread throughout the body. There's a list of implant type recommendations and guidelines for medical providers to follow. So you can also research and pull this list up just to cover all of your bases and making your major health decision if you did want to get your breast or chest redone. Patients with uh, breast implants should observe their breasts and see their doctor for any changes or new enlargement, swelling or pain. Um, just be mindful, you know, keep an eye on your, on your breasts, on your chest. If anything is looking off, call your doctor. Now prepping for surgery. Here are some things that you want to do to prepare for surgery. Uh, pack a small bag of toiletries and other essentials. Uh, bring a loose fitting top that buttons or zips in the front so you've got easier access to care and, you know, just be alert about what's happening with your chest. Have a small pillow ready for the ride home and you can use this to keep the seatbelt's shoulder harness off of your chest so it's not, you know, hurting you after you've just had people cut into your chest. Uh, and you can also stock up on groceries and other essentials before you get home because uh, you do need this time to really rest and recover. So it's important that your your space and your, your fridge are, are prepared for that as well. While you recover, you may need help for a few days to a few weeks. So try to make arrangements for transportation, child care, pet care, personal care, household chores and errands, friend visits, and any other labor intensive task or responsibilities or physically labor intensive task and responsibilities. Uh, after uh, surgery, or your procedure, your surgeon will probably advise you to wear a bandage that compresses your breast or a sports bra for the support you need during recovery. Um, they may prescribe medication for pain as well. And your surgeon will also make recommendations regarding when to return to regular work and recreational activities. Most people may go back to work in a few days, but you might need up to a week off for recovery. And if your job is more physical, you might require longer time off from work just to heal um, completely. When it comes to exercise and physical activity, you'll need to avoid anything strenuous for two weeks at minimum, and following the invasive surgery, you'll want to avoid raising your blood pressure or pulse. Aside from that, too much movement will be very painful for your breast or your chest, so just make sure that you've, you've got plans to kind of be pretty uh, stationary. Thank you all for learning a little bit more about breast and chest health and pleasure. This is uh, newer topics and, and, and areas of education for me, so major shout-outs to healthline.com and medicalnewstoday.com for all the information that they have on their websites that I was able to kind of share in this space today. 
Uh, and then of course, before we go, we want to give you a few reminders about COVID-19 and vaccines. If you've already gotten vaccinated, congratulations. You are taking a really important step to prevent yourself and your loved ones from getting sick uh, from COVID. There's multiple variants spreading a lot of the time. Uh, now we're also dealing with monkeypox here in the U.S. So, um, you know, just, you know, be alert. Feel free to keep wearing your mask. That makes you more comfortable. If you're in crowded spaces, you want to wear your mask sometimes. Um, that's cool, too. Uh, the vaccine isn't 100% effective. And, uh, you know, more contagious variants continue to spread. So just, you know, make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Uh, vaccines don't prevent uh I mean, vaccines are really effective at preventing hospitalization, death, and severe sickness with COVID-19. Um, so that's the good part about being vaccinated. If you do get COVID, you won't get too, too sick, and uh, we'll, you know, live to discuss it with friends. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker Health has COVID-19 vaccine available. Uh, please give us a call at 202-207-2480 to schedule an appointment. And if you're having trouble making an appointment with us and you're a DC resident, you can call 1-855-363-0333 or visit vaccinate.dc.gov. If you're a Maryland resident, you can call 1-855-634-6829 or visit covidlink.maryland.gov. And if you're a Virginia resident, you can call 1-877-829-4682 or visit vaccinate.virginia.gov. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, social distancing, and the like. It's very important that you consider getting the vaccine and discuss COVID precautionary measures with those around you, but be mindful of masks and keep your distance, And uh, especially when you do not know whether another person has been vaccinated or not and you guys are sharing space and it's enclosed. Uh, thank you all for sharing this space with me today. And please follow our Whitman Walker family at Whitman Walker on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out our website at Whitman-Walker.org and follow our family accounts at uh, RealTalkDC underscore and at NoFilterDC. Have a great rest of your day and wishing you a beautiful rest of your week.